In this video, we're going to work on naming and drawing carboxylic acids. And so in our first example here, I'll leave it to you to uh, name it. And then um, after you've named it, restart your video, and we will go through how to name this molecule. Okay, the first question I always ask myself when naming a, a molecule is what family does it belong to? I see this carboxylic acid group, or this uh, carboxyl group over here on the left-hand side. So there's the carboxyl group. And I see attached to it an R group and an OH. And so if I write out that just in general form, I would have an OH connected to a carboxylic group connected to an R group. And that's the general structure of a carboxylic acid. And so I know at this point that I have a carboxylic acid on my hands. And so because of that, the carboxylic acid, the family name, is written as an oic acid. The next thing I do is figure out what uh, is the parent name. And to do that, I just got to figure out how many carbons are in the longest chain that contain the carboxyl carbon. Um, and we give the carboxyl carbon the lowest number possible. In a carboxylic acid, it'll always be one. And so let's number this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And seven then is a heptane derivative uh, for the parent name. Uh, when you name a carboxylic acid using systematic nomenclature, you drop the E and we would call it heptanoic acid. There are no substituents hanging on any of the carbons and so therefore our name is complete and so the name of this molecule is heptanoic acid. Okay, here's the next carboxylic acid we're going to try to name. So if you pause the video, give it a whirl, and then come back and we'll go through the naming of this molecule. Okay, so we first look at the molecule and we first determine what is the um, family that this belongs to. I see um, a carboxylic or a carboxyl group. Uh, right here, and attached to that carboxylic group, I have an OH on one side, and on the other side, I have a very large R group. And so the general structure of this molecule is RCOOH, and that's a carboxylic acid. So I'm going to name this molecule as a carboxylic acid. Let me remove all those little marks, and because I'm going to name it as a carboxylic acid, the suffix of the name is going to be oic acid. Okay? All right. Now, the next thing is to find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the carboxyl carbon. Um, I see the longest continuous carbon chain goes basically right down the middle of the molecule. Um, essentially here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I was naming an alkane, that would be the way to do it. But in this case, I can't number it that way because notice I didn't number the carboxylic carbon, which is right here. And in naming carboxylic acid, that's required. And so that numbering is not correct. Um, we must include the carboxylic carbon and it always gets the lowest number possible in the chain, and so that's actually going to get carbon number one. Uh, this will be carbon number two. Now I have a decision to make, and I see if I go down, I'll be able to pick up the most carbons possible. Uh, so carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, carbon six. If I went up, I would only get to carbon uh, five. If I went to the left, um, that's definitely not going to get me to carbon 6 in any chain, and so therefore the numbering I have here is correct. So it's a six, the parent name will be a 6-carbon chain, and that is a hexane derivative. 
And so when you're naming carboxylic acids, you take the uh, name and you drop the E and add that as part of your name. And so we have a hexanoic acid here. Uh, the next thing I need to do is add the substituents on, and I have two. I have one right here that is a propyl group. And I have one right here, and that is isopropyl. And so the proper name of this uh, molecule would be 2 isopropyl 2 propyl hexanoic acid. Okay, let's try to draw this molecule, 3-methoxybutanoic acid. When I draw molecules, um, I always start on the right-hand side of the name and work my way to the left. I find it easier to do it that way, and then the first thing I pick up is the family name, and I can see here it's an oic acid, which makes this must be a carboxylic acid. And so when drawing carboxylic acids, I know I need a carboxyl group, and on one side it's attached to an OH, on the other side it's attached to an R group. How big is that R group? Well, it looks like it's a, butan, a butane derivative, so that means it's four carbons in length. And so I'm going to go ahead and add in oops, those four carbons. I'm not going to put anything on them yet because I don't know what goes on them. Until I look a little bit further to the left and I see a 3-methoxy group. So let's number our carbons. Uh, uh, the number one carbon is the one where we have the carbonyl carbon. That's automatic in a carboxyl group, or carboxylic acid. Uh, there's the two carbon, the three carbon, and the four carbon. Okay. And so I know on the three carbon is a methoxy group, and the methoxy group has an oxygen attached to that carbon, and than a methyl group. So methoxies are an oxygen um, attachment to some carbon group. Uh, that's the only substituent on here, so the rest of the carbons get decorated with hydrogens. And so I can add those in to make sure that all my carbons have four bonds. All my oxygen should have two. And all my hydrogen should have one. And so there's the correct structure for 3-methoxybutanoic acid. Okay, we'll try one more uh, naming of a, or drawing of a carboxylic acid. So pause the video, take a moment, and try to draw this one, and come back, and we will go through the uh, proper drawing of this structure. Okay, when drawing a uh, structure... Uh, from a name. I always start on the right hand side and I first pick up what is the family name uh, and so because it's oic acid I know it's a carboxylic acid and a carboxylic acid has the general structure shown here um, and we just have to figure out what the R group is there on the left hand side. Uh, the parent name uh, gives away the longest chain containing that carboxylic carbon uh, or carboxyl carbon. Um, it's a pentanoic acid, meaning it's five carbons long, because pent. And so we know we can draw a chain of five carbons. We don't know what's on it yet, but we know there's five carbons in the chain. And if we number those carbons, it would be numbered starting with the carboxyl carbon. And so there's our five carbons. Now we have to figure out what substituents are on it. I see if I keep going left, on the three carbon there's an ethyl group. So I can draw on an ethyl group on the three carbon. And I know I have bromo groups on the three, four, and five carbon. 
And so I can go ahead and draw those on. And that's the substituents I have. And so now all I have to do is decorate the rest of the bonds to those carbons uh, with hydrogens to make sure each carbon has four bonds. Each hydrogen should have one, and every oxygen should have two. And so there's the correct structure of 345 tribromo 3 ethyl pentanoic acid.